Okay, this video is to show you how to do the hard level of the DC Thevenin Norton equivalent circuits uh, tutorial. So let's first look at an example just to illustrate how these problems are different. And the first thing you'll notice here is that these problems now actually contain a dependent source as seen here. And that's going to change uh, some of the solution method um, in that we can no longer do resistive simplification. Um, and we also can't solve this by source transformations because you can never combine an independent and a dependent source, even if they have the same type. So let's scroll down here. And so for example, it's gonna go straight into calculating VOC. So it's gonna replace those uh, terminals there, the V and the I, with a VOC, as you see here. And the I is set to be zero. And then it analyzes that using straightforward uh, nodal analysis to get that unknown voltage. And in that case, we get a four by four matrix, um, and that can be computed. Then for ISC, again, we've applied now a short across those terminals and a SOT variable then, which is the current, which is consistent with the polarity of I in the original circuit. And so um, in this case, um, we're doing again nodal analysis because that seemed to be a little bit easier in this case. Um, and so it's doing the nodal analysis, and that makes it a little bit trickier to find ISC. Um, we have to use, remember, KCL to find a, uh, a current like that, um, which is basically, you can think of it as almost going through a zero value voltage source, if you like, a short circuit. Um, but we can add up, for example, the currents through these uh, elements to get that, and that's what's done here. Um, but otherwise, it's a straightforward uh, nodal analysis to get ISC. And so we get a value there. Um, that's 0.846 amps in this example. And then to find RTH, now we can no longer use resistive simplification because when there's a dependent source, you're not allowed to turn off the dependent sources. So instead, we have to apply a test voltage source to the input, which for convenience, we just take that to be a one volt source. Um, we could also use a a test one amp source here, but in this uh, case, we've just chosen to do a voltage source. And then we defined a SOT current um, coming out of that with sort of the passive sign convention uh, as far as the rest of the circuit is concerned. Um, so the current goes into the positive side of the one volt source, into the rest of the circuit, that is. And now we solve this, um, in this case, um, using any circuit analysis method. Um, here it's just simplified the circuit a little bit first. And now it's actually um, showing that you can combine uh, two resistors that are actually in parallel. So it's simplifying it some more before it does anything further. And then it gets down to this stage and now it uses uh, straightforward mesh analysis um, to compute this. And so we get the mesh equations here after simplifying it. And that's just a normal uh, process. And then I naught would be the 4.31 amps, which is uh, calculated basically from the value of I2. It's the negative of I2. And then to find the R thevenin, we divide the one volt source by the value of that current that we found. So whatever current flows in response to one volt, that's the I naught value. So dividing those two by definition will be R thevenin. And that's gonna give us 0.232 ohms for um, this particular circuit. Um, and then we just do a source transformation on that to get the Norton equivalent circuit. Um, so we divide the voltage by the resistance to get 0.846 amps. And uh, then of course the resistor is the same in both cases and we have to have the uh, terminal shown. And then we check that everything works out and indeed it does. So that's an example. Um, so now let's work a problem at the hard level. So here's our circuit and Let's look at this for a minute and see what we have. So we, of course, have a dependent source, as you always will on this level. Um, I don't see any uh, voltage source in uh, series with the resistor. And this current source, while it's in parallel with the resistor, it's a dependent source. And we don't typically do source transformations on that. I mean, you actually could, but we're not going to do that here. Um, and the program doesn't actually support it. Um, so and I don't see anything in um, series or parallel. So basically there's no simplification to be done here in the circuit editor. 
So we're just going to have to go straight forward and find these parameters. So let's do all three of them just to be complete. So we'll create the, the open circuit voltage here. And now we can choose our method. Um, it's not single loop or single node pair, so we'll have to use either node or mesh. Um, in this case, uh, I don't know, let's use nodal analysis, I guess. That's probably easier. And I'll place the ground here on the negative side of uh, VOC, I think, just for convenience. Now, it's not on a voltage source, but that doesn't really matter too much. Okay, so we're done there. And now um, I'm doing nodal analysis, so I have to write the various equations. So I'll write the voltage constraint equation. Um, and so that's going to be here for the voltage source. It's going to be V2 minus V3 is going to be the value of that 2-volt source. V2 is on the plus side. V3 is on the negative side. So as usual, that would be that. And let's do a SOT variable equation. That would be pretty easy. So SOT branch voltage. My VOC, in this case, will just be equal to the numerical value of V1. So that makes that one very simple. And now I need a control variable for the dependent source. That's this VX uh, voltage. And of course, that'll just be a difference of node voltages. So let's write a control variable equation. And so that would be VX equals, in this case, I just need a single node voltage. So it's just going to be uh, V3 that's involved, since the other side is the reference node. And this is going to be VX. However, um, in this case, the negative side is connected to V3, so I need a minus sign there. OK, and then the last and more complicated piece is to do the KCL equations. So let's see what we can do here. So for node 1, well, we can certainly write it um, for that. And notice, by the way, that the 6 ohm and the 2 ohm are not in series. Oh, I'm sorry. Actually, they are in series. Um, but if we combine them, we're going to lose this uh, SOT voltage. So we actually can't combine them because of the VOC that we need to have. And we would lose this terminal VOC, so that's actually not allowed, even though they are in series, technically, because this is open-circuited. So, but because we need this VOC, we are not allowed to combine it. It's kind of like a non-branch voltage. You can think of it that way. Um, so, okay, so we need a KCL equation for node 1. That's going to be very simple, just two terms. Um, neither resistor connected to ground, so we have that and that is equal to 0. And so we have V1 minus V3 divided by 2 ohms. That's the current leaving here. And then the current leaving here is V1 minus V2 divided by the 6 ohms. And that's correct. And then now let's do it for V2. But you see, oh, V2, we can't do it because it's connected to a voltage source. And again, the current through a voltage source is whatever it needs to be. So we're actually going to have to form a super node out of V2 and V3 in order to do that. So we'll form a super node there. And so now we look at all the currents that leave that. And let's see, we're going to have a current going out here, one going out here. So those are differences of voltage. And then we're going to have our current going out here, which um, that's just reference to ground. So that'll be like this. And then we have this uh, voltage control of current source. So that'll be that. And then another uh, resistor connected to ground. So we need one of, another one of those terms. And that's equal to 0. So a little bit complicated equation. And so we have, um, for the supernode, we have, for example, V3 minus V1 divided by 2 ohms. That's the current leaving the supernode this way. And then the current leaving this way will be V2 minus V1 over 6 ohms. That's going this way. And then the current going this way will be simply V3 over 6 ohms. That's going to ground. And then this current would be a plus because that current actually is leaving this node. So that would be plus 4 times Vx. Fill in the x there. And finally, this current through the 3 ohm is going to be um, just V2 divided by the 3 ohms because the other side is, is ground. Um, so we'll check that. And that is indeed correct. Um, so that's V2 and V3. And that's basically it. We've done it for all the uh, nodes. So we're done writing those equations. So we say no more equations. And now, as usual, we're going to combine those uh, to form simplified equations. So um, we could say, for example, V2 has a coefficient of 1. V3 has a coefficient of minus 1. 
and then that's going to be equal to the constant value of 2. So that would be the first one. And then we can similarly do that here. We have to uh, combine all these. Notice there's a Vx term in general, which will come into play in this equation. Um, and then uh, the equation for the control variable, um, that would just be Vx equals minus V3. So that would be uh, 1 Vx. And then um, if we put them on the same side, this would be a 1 also. Um, and so if we check that, um, not all of them are correct because I didn't finish these two, but these two are correct. And then let's just fill those in with the cheat button. Um, and you'd have to do that by uh, simplifying those. And we'll check that, and indeed that's all correct. Okay, so then we will copy this over into a matrix equation here. And check that, which will be correct. And now we need to solve those by hand. Um, and again, two of these equations, namely this one and this one, um, allow simple substitution into the other two. So after we do those simple substitutions, we can basically get rid of um, two of the variables and just have a simple two by two system, which again, that's pretty easy to do by hand. So you would do that on paper. And again, you can enter all these values if you want. Um, I'm just gonna skip it since we really only need the value of v1. We don't have to solve for all of those necessarily. Um, so let's just enter the VOC directly then, which is equal to V1. And you could calculate that out to be uh, 0.69 uh, volts. Okay, so we found VOC. And now to find ISC, we would, again, just click that button. And it's placed a short circuit across the terminals in the direction that the I originally pointed. And now if we pick a circuit analysis method. We could be nodal. Uh, we could do nodal. Um, we could do mesh. Um, let's do mesh analysis on this one, I think. And so that'll automatically assign mesh currents for me. And now um, let's do a SOT variable, which is very simple. So the SOT branch current, the ISC, um, that's going to just be equal to I1 here. So that's a very simple equation. And then um, since we're doing a mesh analysis, uh, the current sources will give us a or the current source rather, will give us a constraint equation. So that's going to be, current constraint is going to be a difference of two mesh currents is going to be equal to this value of this current source, which is the four Siemens VX. Um, and then, oh, I'm sorry, we need the equal sign there. So that's going to be I4 minus um, I3, which goes in the opposite direction, is equal to the four Siemens times VX. We'll check that one. And indeed, that is correct. Um, now we need a control variable equation for uh, Vx, and that's just going to be an Ohm's law type of equation. So let's select control variable equation. So Vx now, um, let's fill that in as Vx. That's going to be given by a difference of mesh currents times a resistance. So uh, that would be this term here. And so to be uh, compatible with the polarity of that, we want to use passive sign convention. So that would be I1 um, minus I3 which has the active sign convention, uh, times the 6 ohms. So that would be our, our control variable equation. And finally, we have to do the KVL equations. So we'll select KVL. And um, so this mesh we can do OK. And so we just have two things there. So we have a difference in mesh currents times a resistor and another difference in mesh currents times a resistor equals 0. So that would be I1. minus I3 um, times the 6 ohms. And then I1, again, minus I2 this time for this voltage drop here, times the uh, 2 ohms. And then let's do it for mesh 2, which we can do. And so that's going to be a difference in mesh currents. Well, actually, yeah, and then um, well, we have one of those, and let's put a, a voltage in the middle there, equals 0. And so the first one here going clockwise is going to be I2 minus I1 times the 2 ohms. And now this is a voltage drop. I'm sorry, we're adding voltage drops, but this is actually voltage rise because we go negative to positive. So that would mean this has to have a minus sign. It would be minus 2. And finally, then we have just the I2 times the 6 ohms to complete that circuit. And that's correct. 
And then let's see, for I3, now we can't do it for I3 because we don't know the voltage across a current source. It's whatever it needs to be. The current value is fixed at this value, but the voltage we don't know. And similarly for I4, we can't do that. So we actually have to form a super mesh there consisting of I3 and I4, um, those two meshes combined. And so let's see what we need there. We need one of these, and we're going to need one of these, and then uh, a fixed voltage drop is equal to zero. So the first thing going clockwise around the super mesh would be I3 minus I1 times 6 ohms. And then we have I4 times 3 ohms. And finally, as we come around back to the start, we have a voltage drop there, which is indeed a plus 2 volts, because that's going from plus to minus. So that's, I believe, all of our equations. So we say no more equations now. And now we need to, uh, of course, do this simplified equations, which are going to be a little complex here. Um, and I could start doing those for you, but I'm just going to, in the interest of time, uh, kind of cheat there. Um, so that's what these simplified equations will look like in standard form. And we'll check that. And then we'll, of course, copy that to a matrix equation, as we usually do. Um, that has to be correct since I copied it. And then now, again, we have to solve by hand. Now, this looks a little bit intimidating. Um, but again, this equation, uh, well, I'm sorry, that's not an equation. That's part of what we already did. But this equation is fairly simple form, although it actually it does relate three different variables. So that's not as helpful. Um, so yeah, this one is not a very uh, sparse matrix as we might like. So this one you might actually have to just use Gaussian elimination on. So um, you could probably do some substitutions, but this one's a little bit more complex. So um, we really need, only need uh, I1, so I'm not going to bother entering all these. We could. Um, that would be the values of all of them, but uh, what we really need is I1. So ISC is just I1. So we just copy the value of I1 in there that we already found here. And again, that would have to be done on paper, or perhaps using MATLAB or something of that nature. OK, so now we have enough information to draw our final equivalent circuits. Um, however, I will show you how to find RTH using a test source, um, since that's something we haven't done before. Um, and again, you wouldn't have to do this, or you could do it in place of one of the others, but you do need to do two out of the three parameters. We've already done two, but I'm going to do the third. So let's actually use a test. Um, current source, for example. Um, and that means it'll have a SOT voltage. So we pick this option. We can't do resistive simplification. That just won't work. So we put a 1 amp source here in the direction of the original current uh, with a test voltage such that um, this voltage divided by that current will be the Thevenin equivalent resistance. Now, we have to remember that we need to kill the independent sources, not the test source, because that's outside the circuit. But in the circuit, we need to kill the independent source. Um, this, remember, is a test source, so that doesn't get killed. But we do have to kill the independent voltage source. If we don't do that, it's going to give me an error. So, um, and it's going to, you know, possibly, uh, you know, if I make too many mistakes, then I, I could lose credit for the problem. So I'll change that to a short. And until I'm done. And now, um, can I simplify the circuit? Well, yes, actually I can. Now that I've changed that to a short, these two are in parallel. So let's just simplify that out a little bit, make that easier. So the 12 divided by 8, that's going to be 1 and a half. And then I'll delete that one and check that combination. OK. And you might also notice that this resistor is in series with a current source, which makes it basically redundant, or sometimes you call it current splittable. So this actually will have no bearing on the solution. So I can just simplify things by simply getting rid of that, changing it to a short. Um, OK. Um, oh, I, I, I'm sorry, I stand corrected. The reason I can't do that here is because I actually want the voltage across the current source, and that will actually be changed by that resistor. So I take that back. When I need the voltage across the current source, that is not current splittable. So I made a, a, a small mistake there. Okay, so um, 
now this resistor and this resistor are actually in parallel, so I could combine those. So the product would be 18 divided by the sum of nine, that's gonna be two. And I can delete this, that does work. And that's as simple as I can get it, but it certainly helps to simplify it there. And now I can pick whatever method I want. Um, now uh, let's see, we have two meshes and one, two, three nodes, so it really doesn't matter very much. Um, let's just do nodal analysis, I guess. And so let's put, um, this for convenience, put the ground there, I think. And now um, we have to write a, uh, well, let's do the, the equation for the uh, SOT voltage first, the V naught. So that's just going to be equal to V1, the way I've done this, and that makes that very simple. Um, now I need a control variable equation for my dependent source. So my VX, um, let's write a control variable equation, and my VX will just be a difference of, well actually just it'll just be one node voltage, V2. So that's Vx, and this is V2. And checking the polarity, um, it's opposite polarity because V2 is on the minus side. So that'll be a minus sign there. Okay, um, and then what we still need is the KCL equation for each node or supernode. So let's do it for node one, for example. And there we just have a current flowing in and a current flowing out. So it's gonna be a current source. So we need the KCL equation. So we need a current source value and then a difference of node voltages divided by resistance is equal to zero. And so the current leaving there is actually a negative one amp. So we'll make it minus uh, one amp. And then the current leaving here is gonna be V1 minus V2 over 1.5 ohms. So that's correct. Um, and then for node two, we can again write a KCL equation. So now we have um, a resistor not connected to ground, a resistor connected to ground, and this type of dependent uh, voltage controlled current source, and that'll all sum to zero. And so this current going through here would be V2 minus V1 divided by 1.5. And then the current through the two ohm would be V2 over two, don't let the VX confuse you there. That has nothing to do with valuing this current. So V2 divided by two. And finally, um, this current is actually leaving this node. So that's gonna have a plus sign. And that will be just four Siemens times VX. So we'll check that and that is correct. And then the reference node, of course, we don't write. Um, so we're done here. And that's no more equations. And as usual, then we collect the simplified equations. Um, in the interest of time here, I'm not going to go through details of that, but just fill that in here, which you can do from these equations. Um, we'll check that. And then of course we'd copy that into a matrix equation. And then we'd have to solve this on paper. Um, now this time, um, we do have a rather simple equation, so substituting that in would give us a two by two. So definitely that would be worthwhile. Um, and we don't need both of these, so I'm just gonna skip this step and just do the V1, or the V naught rather, which is equal to V1. And if you solve those equations, you'll find out it's equal to 1.21 volts. So that is correct. And so now the last step, however, we have to actually, we have the value of V naught in response to the one amp source, but now we need to actually tell it what RTH is. So to enter that, we need to just numerically compute uh, 1.21 volts divided by one amp. So that's gonna be 1.21 ohms. And, uh, and by the way, I should point out that this feminine resistance, when you have dependent sources present, can actually be negative, which is rather strange. Um, basically, it means that that uh, equivalent resistor is supplying power to the circuit rather than dissipating power, which ordinary resistors, of course, never do. Uh, but the feminine equivalent resistance, when you have dependent sources, sometimes comes out to be negative. 
So don't be too surprised if that happens. That doesn't necessarily mean you made a mistake. Normally, negative resistance would be a, a cause for great worry, but not if it's a Thevenin equivalent resistance when dependent sources are present. Now, if there's no dependent sources, that will not happen. Okay, so now we have all our parameters. Um, as I said, we didn't really need to do all three of those, but I just did for completeness. And so the last step is always to draw the equivalent circuits here. Um, and this is kind of a freeform drawing. So um, I'm going to draw my Thevenin equivalent. I'm going to add a voltage source here. Um, and that should be a 0.69 based on what I already found, which is up here for reference. And then I need to add a resistor. And then I need to add a short also to complete the circuit. And then the resistor value will be the 1.21. And then I'll check that feminine equivalent just by clicking this button. And indeed, it tells me I'm correct. I've got the right geometry, in other words, for a Thevenin equivalent circuit. And I got the right polarity of the source. You have to be careful, as always, about polarity. And now I need to transform that basically into a current source. So I'm going to move that over here and change it to a current source and divide the voltage by the resistance to get the current, which then will be, if I do the math here, that's 0.569 amps. And then I put this in parallel with the current source. And then I now need to add some shorts here to complete the circuit. So that's now the form of a Thevenin equivalent. Um, and this is going to be 0.569, which actually I already had since I did the complete solution. And so now um, I just check the Norton equivalent. And indeed, that's correct. So now I'm basically done with the problem. Um, there's the final results. And I just click this button. And I can always um, view the complete solution here, which I will skip now. So that's it for the third level.